Hey there, Litwitters. Have you done some shopping at the word market and come up with some fun humdingers? Some nouns to nosh on? Maybe some scrumptious sentences? Well, you may have noticed that the letters in your kit will also spell the title of Norton Jester's wonderful book, so as a first step in our art piece, let's glue those letters down in order to spell the phantom toll booth. Okay? Here we go. All right, good job. And next, let's pay tribute to Jules Pfeiffer, who illustrated this book by imitating his work. In fact, let's see how closely we can copy his style. My personal challenge was to see if I could recreate the spelling bee so closely that even Jules might be confused between his drawing and mine. How do you think I did? Can you tell the difference or whose is whose? Now, this isn't a challenge I would have the chops to try if our illustrator worked with lots of detail, like the artist Garth Williams, or painted in oils with a very realistic style like the famous illustrator N.C. Wyeth. But Jules Pfeiffer did his work in ink pen and has a very loose, casual technique. So we can achieve a very close likeness of his work without copying every stroke. It can still be very much our own art, but recognized as his style, which is a way to compliment him, really. We could call this an homage to Jules Pfeiffer, an attempt to copy his style because we admire and respect him, and we want to learn from him. So you're welcome to choose any of his illustrations to imitate, whichever character you like the best. For this drawing, I'm going to choose Talk. I like dogs, and I think that Talk is very clever, and he isn't too complicated to copy. Now, whenever we look at art, either to imitate it or even just to appreciate it, the first thing we want to do is to notice. So what do you notice about Jules Pfeiffer's style? You can see here, for instance, that he uses very simple lines to draw Toc's outline and face, and that most of his body is filled in with scratchy lines going all in one direction, see? And where he wants to add extra shading, Mr. Pfeiffer has added other lines going in the other direction. So this makes a, a kind of crosshatch effect. We also notice that Toc's face is very simple with no shading as is the face of the watch on his side. So when we look at Talk, his expression and the clock he's winding stand out to us. They don't get all lost in the crosshatches and extra lines. So see what you can notice first about the drawing that you want to imitate and then just have a go. Enjoy it, enjoy being Jules Pfeiffer and give him credit as being your inspiration. Here's how my picture of talk turned out. Um, when I first got going on it, I thought, uh-oh, I didn't get this going right, and I don't think it's going to look anything like Jules Pfeiffer's drawing. But by the time I got done with it, I was actually pretty happy with it. It doesn't look exactly the same as his, but that's not what I was after anyway. I think it suggests that I was copying his work and um, pays him some respect and also has my own particular flair to it, which is just fine. <laughs>